The movie opens with a dramatic scene of a bank robbery. Two masked robbers confront bank employees transferring money to a vehicle in the bank's yard. The robbers demanded the money boxes under threat. In a brave but risky move, one employee attempts to disarm a robber and succeeds in pulling off his mask. This action, however, leads to the robber accidentally shooting the employee in the leg. The sound of the gunshot quickly draws nearby police officers to the scene of the crime. Reacting swiftly, the robbers seized one of the money boxes and dashed for their parked car not far from the robbery site. The police, alerted by the gunshot, initiate a chase. As they reach a less crowded area, one robber makes a calculated decision to halt the car and confronts the police by firing at their vehicle. The other robber, already identified by the bank employees, watches in shock as his partner escalates the situation. This sudden act causes the police car to crash. One officer manages to escape the wrecked vehicle while his partner, trapped inside, begs for mercy. Ignoring the plea, the aggressive robber brutally assaults the trapped officer until he falls unconscious. That evening, Pat, Tate and Kenny reach their hideout. Tate berated Kenny for the botched robbery and for accidentally shooting a bank employee, Despite intending to bring both money boxes Kenny only managed to secure one, he claimed it was an accident, but Tate's fury escalated, especially after discovering a mere £2,500 in a stolen money box, significantly less than the anticipated £50,000. Tate demanded that Kenny leave and dispose of their getaway car. Kenny, however, refused and insisted on receiving his share of the loot, and this incited Tate's anger further, leading him to hurl the money box at Kenny and causing him injury. Disenchanted by Tate's treatment, Kenny departed to rendezvous with his informant, who was ironically one of the money carriers from a previous haste they had committed. Kenny accused his informant of providing misleading information about the money. He threatened to kill him unless he took care of the witness who had seen Kenny during the robbery. Fearing for his safety, the informant visited the hospital to see his friend, who was recovering from gunshot wounds inflicted by Kenny. Upon noticing two detectives interrogating his friend, the informant made a hasty retreat. Detectives Jones and Monroe, while showing several suspect photos from the bank robbery to the bank employees, receive identification from one employee who recognizes Kenny as the perpetrator he witnessed during the crime. Meanwhile, Kenny, in a different part of town, makes his way to a nightclub where he encounters a transgender entertainer known as Billy the Kid. They engage in a conversation about their business ventures. Billy instructs Kenny to meet with his boss, Mo, at the Platinum Lace Bar, informing him that the items Kenny ordered are ready for pickup. Kenny reassures Billy of his imminent ability to settle the payment for these items. In another development, Tate arranges a meeting with David Hexel, who leads an illicit drug cartel, to convey his inability to amass the £20,000 David had demanded for their narcotics transaction. In a desperate move, Tate accepts a loan from David, committing to not only eliminate David's competitor in the drug trade, but also to repay the borrowed amount twofold. As Tate takes his leave, David receives a cautionary reminder not to get Kenny involved, given Kenny's reputation for disrupting their illegal activities. Shortly after Tate's departure, David's girlfriend Charlotte makes a surprising admission of her acquaintance with Tate, arousing David's suspicion about her awareness of his dealings with Tate. Tate calls Sam, Kenny's half-brother, to inquire about Kenny's condition. Despite Kenny being with him at the time, Sam denies hearing from Kenny because he prefers to avoid Tate for the moment. Kenny outlines his plan to secure a loan for his illegal drug venture, but Sam initially resists. Convinced by Kenny's argument about the business opportunity, Sam eventually consents to a loan of £25,000. With the funds secured, Kenny hastens to Billy, who is undergoing boxing training with his father, Fergus. Kenny reveals the money to Billy, and together, they proceed to purchase the necessary illegal drugs from Mo. In another scene, we find Tate driving his car to a bridge meeting with David, where he picks up the requested illegal drugs. David insists on receiving the agreed £40,000 payment for the drugs threatening Tate with consequences for any attempt to flee. Meanwhile, Kenny and Billy await Moe's arrival at Platinum Lice, one of the country's most notorious drug lords. Kenny queries Billy about the potential reaction of his father, Fergus, upon discovering his transgender identity, to which Billy speculates a possible surprise. Upon meeting Moe for the drug deal, Moe unexpectedly orders his henchmen to assault Kenny and Billy. The next day, an amusement park guard finds Kenny's body in a roller coaster seat, Shocked by the news of Kenny's death relayed by Kenny's mother, January, Tate hastily goes to the hospital to offer her comfort. Detectives Jones and Monroe then confront Tate, asking him to identify Kenny's body. Knowing Kenny's involvement in criminal activities, they interrogate Tate about his location during the robbery. Tate finds himself compelled to fabricate a story, asserting he was at home. While grieving his late friend at Kenny's home, Tate was taken aback by Joey Waller's unexpected visit. 
Suspicious of Joey's potential involvement in Kenny's murder, Tate tried to extract information about the killer. Still, Joey insisted he was unaware of who might be responsible for his friend's demise. In response, Tate enlisted Joey's help to track down the brains behind Kenny's murder. That night, Tate and Sam convened outside a nightclub to talk about Kenny's passing, with Sam visibly stunned by the news Tate shared. The next day, they made their way to the prison to break the news of Kenny's death to Johnny. Johnny voiced his disappointment in Sam for not safeguarding his son and inquired about the manner of Kenny's demise. Upon hearing about Kenny's intention to deal with Billy, Johnny directed Sam and Tate to delve into Billy's dealings to uncover the mastermind of Kenny's murder. Sometime later, Tate visited Billy's boxing training facility to meet the young man. However, when he asked a boxing trainer about Billy's location, the trainer ignored him. This angered Tate and upset the people present. In response, Tate used a piece of rope to strangle the boxing trainer, demanding he disclose Billy's whereabouts. Meanwhile, David employed a hitman to eliminate a target within two days. The hitman wrote down his phone number on a crossword puzzle page in the newspaper and gave it to David, who unknowingly kept it in his pocket. Charlotte, having eavesdropped on their conversation, broke into David's safe and stole his money. During their meeting, Charlotte deliberately missled David and covertly removed the newspaper clipping from his pocket. Tate then proceeded to a junkyard to look for Billy, but Fergus did not welcome him. Fergus commanded his henchman to destroy Tate's car with heavy machinery. Enraged, Tate fought Fergus's henchman one after the other. The fight ceased when Detectives Jones and Monroe arrived, inquiring about Billy. To avoid police trouble, Fergus reluctantly told them that Billy was not there. Jones gave him her business card to contact her if Billy returned. Subsequently, the detectives escorted Tate to the police station for questioning about his role in the bank robbery and Kenny's death. Detectives Jones and Monroe, at the police station, voiced their suspicions about Tate, who they believed masterminded Kenny's murder over a dispute regarding the stolen bank robbery money and had participated in the robbery himself. Tate, denying all allegations, lied again, claiming he was at home during the bank robbery by Kenny. However, due to the lack of sufficient evidence, the detectives had to let Tate go. Jody then picked Tate up, and they headed to the Freedom Bar. Right before entering the bar, Tate got a call from David inquiring about the proceeds from the illegal drugs he had provided. Tate reassured David, promising significant profits from the drug sale soon. After the call with David ended, Tate walked into the bar and approached Stevie, the bartender, to ask about Billy's location. He explained his need to inform Billy about Fergus's predicament. Stevie then told him that Billy was at his Aunt Margot's bar. On the other hand, Charlotte met one of David's henchmen, who had orders to eliminate someone without David's knowledge. She gave the henchman a photo of Tate with instructions to target him. After her meeting, Charlotte caught a taxi to the airport. Meanwhile, Tate noticed Joey entering Platinum Mills Bar just as he was about to go into Margot's bar. Suspicious, Tate followed Joey discreetly and discovered Moses' henchman assaulting Billy inside the bar. In a twist, the taxi driver, who was actually one of David's operatives tasked with eliminating Charlotte, made a sudden stop. This abrupt action caused Charlotte to hit her head on the partition, knocking her unconscious. Inside the nightclub, Moe's henchman cornered Tate. The commotion brought Moe out of his room. Tate, deciding to avoid a confrontation, pretended to be lost and wandered into Moe's area. Once outside the club, a mysterious caller instructed Tate to head to Millennium Mills to discover the truth about Kenny's fate. Meanwhile, one of David's henchmen took Charlotte to a specific location on purpose and locked her in a car rigged with an explosive device. Trapped, Charlotte screamed for help. Tate, arriving at the scene, saw the taxi cab explode, killing Charlotte. He realized someone had set him up to take the blame for Charlotte's death. Tate quickly jumped into his car and drove away from the scene. Tate visited Joey's house to ask why Joey had been at the Platinum Mills bar. Joey said he had just gone there to watch the exotic dance performances. At the same time, TV told Billy at Marco's bar about Tate's inquiry into Billy's whereabouts. This news made Billy realize that Stevie had told someone else where he was. Worried about Fergus's reaction to his involvement in the drug trade that led to Kenny's death and his identity as a transgender woman, Billy thought about leaving Margot's bar. Margot, however, assured Billy that Fergus would try to understand and encouraged him to go home and talk to Fergus. Soon after their meeting, Sam presented various weapons to Tate, suggesting their use for avenging Kenny's death. Tate then made his way to a junkyard, intent on retaliating against Fergus for the destruction of his car. At the junkyard, Tate hurled a grenade at Fergus and his henchmen, but it failed to detonate. In response, Fergus seized a rifle and opened fire on Tate, who'd hastily retreated in his vehicle. Following Tate's escape, 
the previously thrown grenade unexpectedly detonated beneath the car, killing Fergus's henchman. In a parallel incident, one of Moe's henchmen ambushed Stevie at the bar, employing violence to extract Billy's location from him. Despite their efforts, they soon discovered Stevie's deceit upon searching the premises. Ultimately, Tate located Billy, who was taking refuge in Margot's bar after Stevie's guidance. Tate demanded a recount of the events leading to Kenny's death from Billy. Billy recounted how a drug deal gone wrong at Platinum Mills Bar resulted in Kenny's murder. After a severe beating and regaining consciousness, Billy found himself bound to a chair. At the same time, the assailant suspended Kenny with his hands tied. A mysterious figure then entered, provoking Kenny's fatal outburst. Meanwhile, Billy managed to untie himself and flee the abduction scene. Following their exchange, Billy aided Tate in infiltrating Platinum Mills by neutralizing one of the guards. Inside, Tate overpowered one of Moe's henchmen and seized a stash of money and drugs that Moe's crew was tallying. Around the same time, David was contacting Tate about the deposit he was supposed to make. Tate stepped out of the room for a brief moment, leaving the bag with the money and illegal drugs by the entrance. As he returned, a bold henchman of Moe's confronted him with a knife, reminiscing about Kenny's demise. Tate quickly drew a knife from his sleeve and fatally injured the bold henchman. Soon after, Tate found Mo, who appeared to be relaxing in his room. Just as Tate was about to confront the drug lord Terry, an old friend presumed dead, occurred unexpectedly. Terry admitted to murdering Kenny because of a grudge against Tate and Charlotte, who had once stolen drugs from Mo. While they were talking, Joey sneaked into the bar, pointing a gun at Tate's back, still harboring resentment for past grievances that left his face disfigured. Shortly after that, Mo's henchmen burst into the room with Billy as their captive. Terry seized the moment to slip away. Mo commanded his henchmen to kill Tate and Billy. Still, at that moment, Fergus barged in armed, threatening to fire unless they released Billy. In the ensuing chaos, Joey shot Fergus, triggering a shootout. Tate shot Mo, critically wounding the drug lord. At the same time, Billy tried to carry the injured Fergus out, aiming to get his father to a hospital. At the same time, Tate faced off against Mo's henchmen. Despite his injuries, Mo begged Joey for help, but Joey disregarded his boss's pleas. Using his remaining strength, Mo managed to shoot Joey in the leg before collapsing. After overcoming his adversary, Tate encountered another threat from one of Mo's henchmen, but Billy intervened, fatally shooting the henchman. Joey managed to flee the bar on a bus just as Tate was about to catch him. Inside the bar, Billy mourned the inability to save his father. Before dying, Fergus expressed his pride in Billy, accepting her as a transgender woman. Billy then left the bar, taking the money Tate had left behind. The next day Tate, intending to return home, noticed the police searching his house and decided to change his plans. He met Sam, who provided him with some money and a passport to leave the country. Tate informed Sam of his intention to settle his affairs before leaving. The following day, the police were stunned to discover Joey's body in a car trunk. In the film's closing scenes, Terry is shown meeting with David, his supplier in the illegal drug trade, and introducing Greener as their new partner, unaware that Tate was secretly observing them. The story concludes with a cautionary note, never hurl money boxes at your partner, lest you lose both your loot and your friend, and always ensure your grenades explode at the right moment to avoid a messy situation.